thank you very much, Leila. Um, you know, we've heard an overwhelming amount of information, and I think it can leave us a little bit depressed, to be blunt, pissed off. Um, but it can also tend to make us feel this is really overwhelming and beyond us. What can we do? Uh, that then we get into a normalization, just letting it go. So I'd like to ask each of you, you started to touch on it, give us one takeaway of what we can do on the issue you dealt with, where we ourselves could try to make a difference in kind of a micro way. You started, Layla, and let's go in reverse order. One takeaway, and then we're gonna open it up and you can press this further. As I said, the Palestinians are, uh, uh, you know, we're uh, community-based. The one thing that helped people, I think, get through the last aggression in 2014 was the internet. Twitter, uh, Facebook, it helped me connect with my relatives to be supportive of them. You can reach out and connect with people now, and you can be that, just that voice of interest. You, you know, I think that it's not hard to make friends on Facebook. Yeah. It's not hard to find people in Gaza who are wanting to make friends and to have like a pen pal in America. It is really not hard and there is no loss to you. You maybe, you, you know, if you change your mind about it, it's not working out. But that kind of reaching out, there's groups called like We Are Not Numbers. There are all kinds of these sort of, Middle East Eye is a, is a journalism outlet that ha helps support like local journalists on the ground in Gaza. You can go to any of these websites, write an email, and then become friends on Facebook, and now you have a contact, and now you're a person of support, and if something happens and, and they just want a, to hear a friendly voice, you are there. And I think we have to take advantage of what social media has to offer in this context when you can't physically go there. I do think people should go, but it's very hard to go to Gaza. But you can still be there. You can travel there by Google Maps. I go there sometimes. It's kind of sad. I'm like, oh, I'm, in, I'm looking at Khan Yunus. I wish it were real time. Um, but, but I think those are, take advantage of those things because where you may not be able to then provide the, you know, the training for the personnel to do the counseling, you're part of the social network that is helping people survive emotionally and psychologically. So that's just off the top of my head one thing. Say again, the websites. We can't hear you. So the so Middle East Eye is a journalist. There's also uh, We Are Not Numbers. You can really just search anything related to uh, you know the Palestinian situation. We'll have an email address that you can reach out to, and they will connect you. Whatever area it is that you're interested in. Okay, thank you very much. Let them know they're not alone. My wife Linda and I have a friend in Chicago, Mexican-American activist, also named Linda, who connected with a young 15-year-old artist that's just a genius in Gaza. She raised money and put her own money into it and brought the two of them to Chicago and toured them around the Midwest last summer. And now she's raising money so that she can get, and I think she's got it, to get that young 15-year-old into the Chicago art school. One person did this and got a community engaged uh, by friend, befriending an artist on, from Gaza on Facebook. I can't believe how she got him out, but uh, she did it all. Okay, one thing now. Tony Litwinkel. Watch for a report coming out from the World Bank in the next few months on the situation in Gaza. It's in the works. Thank God for Amira Haas. Uh, she had a nice article in Haaretz um, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, in which she interviewed um, an economist from the World Bank. And he said that a report was coming out. So you should watch for it. The other thing is, just when you're sitting on your computer, do one little search a day to get informed about it, about water, about the rights of children, whatever it is. And when you get that information, talk to people about it. I'm working on two very conservative friends of mine 
and I try very, very, very hard to just present them little bits of information to open up their mind to the fact that what is going on over there is illegal and immoral and unjust. And we don't want to do anything else but stop it. One thing, right now, right this minute, there are many dedicated organizations in the West Bank and Gaza <coughs> helping children. One of those is the YMCA of East Jerusalem. They're helping to rehabilitate some of these children we, we learned about who are incarcerated. There are organizations that are building and putting in place playgrounds, playground builders, many organizations. There are, and there, on the internet you can find these. There are many of them. Uh, organizations of lawyers helping these children. Medical organizations providing Kinder USA and many others providing medical services. It's really easy on the internet to find these. And uh, that's an immediate step that we can take today that will have immediate results and provide hope for people in Palestine. I'm going to add one, Tom. Um, Linda and I were part of defend, uh, the uh, No Way to Treat a Child getting off the ground in Chicago through American Friends Service Committee, JVP, FOSNA, and so on. In fact, Linda gave the name No Way to Treat a Child to this movement. And it has really developed. They held hearings in Congress, Congresswoman Betty McCollum from Minneapolis held hearings a year ago, and now with this outrageously pro-Zionist political climate, they've held off, but hearings are in the works now. And stand by for those to be announced. But we have found that this is the one thing about Palestine that our Zionist democratic congressmen in the South Chicago suburbs Dan Lipinski is willing to listen to. Nothing else. He signs every damn pro-Israel legislation piece, anti-BDS and everything that comes down the pike. This is one thing that we think got to him when we went in and confronted him. So a delegation to your congressional office or your senator pulled together a few people, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, whatever, do your homework, and then pester the hell out of them. <laughs> Linda called their office weekly for seven months to get an appointment. And when we walked in, the organizer, what was he called? Uh, the chief of staff in the Chicago office said, oh, Linda Khatib, you have harassed me for seven months. Nice to meet you. That's what we have to do. And this is one issue to consider uh, doing something about in the next few months. Okay, now let's open it up to you. Press us further, ask questions. You heard about what happened to World Vision uh, from the Israeli government. They went after the 800 pound gorilla that has basically spending millions in Gaza in order to help the people of Gaza. And the way they did it was unconscionable they attacked them in the media before they even went to World Vision to say uh, there's an issue, which wasn't an issue. And when the countries involved, like Germany and Australia, stopped the funding to World Vision and said, give us proof, they said, oh, we will get evidence. So when they went after World Vision and then they went after UNDP and the UNDP person in Gaza had to plead, uh, plead to lesser charge, so now they're trying to cut off the funding. And I agree with you, the only way to do it is to go to members of Congress, and especially from churches, considering the administration and other things that are going right now, and indicate to them that we need to provide more funding for the children and the women and the aged in Gaza. 
Okay. Is there a way to get certain lingo for everyone if there's an email list to say, here's the talking points when you go to your members of Congress, this is what we need you to do. And, and in addition to Kinder or Calendar USA, uh, there's also ANERA and other organizations. Yeah. World Vision has Palestinian children that you can sponsor too, but you won't find them on the website. So there's a whole bunch of ways of doing this. But it's crucial that we uh, get in touch with our yeah. members of Congress. And if yeah. there's any suggestions, please let us know. Thank you, Rima, for raising that case. World Vision is the third largest relief and development agency in the world. And Israel going after them is not an accident because a lot of their support comes from evangelical Christians in this country, but many, many others. Third largest, bigger than the Red Cross, World Vision is. And their work in Gaza is educating Americans and Australians, Europeans, about the actual situation. So the lies they put up against Mohammed in Gaza and to put him in prison and on trial for bogus charges that have now been revealed as uh, totally bogus is unconscionable. Now, any of you want to speak to this? Yeah, Esther, why don't you come up? If anybody is interested in lobbying your elected representatives, please come talk to me. JVP has been working on this for four years. We've learned some things. Um, it's great to go in in an interfaith way. There's always certain topics that are you know, forthcoming, legislation. Uh, I would suggest not framing it as anti-BDS legislation, but as framing it as the suppression of Palestinian advocacy. Um, and just things like that that we've learned. So please come talk to me. I will, um, you know, give you my information. We can figure out who your reps are and how to get a meeting. And the other side does this. If we start to get together, if they start getting phone calls, if they get letters, if they get faxes, as it turns out, they still use faxes, and it's better than email, but it's all about the numbers. Politicians like to, or need to hear from people in their district because you are someone who can vote for them. Thank you. Talking points, they, they have them. But in your district, I think if they can get, if the, if the member can get 20, uh, perhaps consistently 20 to 25, they'll start listening because they sure get it from the other side wondering what all of these kids are arrested for. Is it more than just throwing rocks? Or what can we do to go over and counsel them in nonviolence so they are not punished in such a huge way? So the most, they're arrested on accusations of having thrown rocks. Accusations of having thrown rocks. Now, the... <laughs> Yeah, some of them have thrown rocks, absolutely. Um, I might, too, if I lived in their circumstances. But in the, in the trials that come, um, understand this is a military trial, and quite, ev quite often the evidence is sealed. So the lawyer finally is present, and he says, what are the charges? Well, the child has, um, is accused of throwing rocks, or the child has, uh, is accused of of belonging to an illegal organization, a terrorist organization. Well, what organization? I'm sorry, that evidence is sealed. Well, who, other, who else belongs to that organization? I'm sorry, the evidence is sealed. It's that kind of a system. Um, can, can I add to that? You, you might want to use as leverage the fact that <clears throat> In Israel, adulthood begins and childhood ends at the age of 18. But if you're Palestinian, adulthood begins at the age of 16, not 18. So there's a discriminatory basis in the law. And for them to arrest children who are less than 
15 or 16. I mean, 15 and a half, you know, it's marginal. Um, but if they're arresting people less than 15, that is such a violation of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And you, you really need to go and consult and get an, an executive summary of that and use that when you're talking to your Congress people. Use that. You know, there is a Palestinian like law enforcement. And in this country, if my son were through a rock at a building, he, he would get, and actually, well, okay, I don't have to give you the details. But you know, things happen in high school and actually we had to go down to the station <laughs> and there was a case against my son for doing something stupid at McDonald's, okay? But it was the local police department, right? We went in, they released him to us, um, they, they dropped any charges, we went through the legal system to drop any record of it because of course it's his future, it was sort of a silly thing that they did. But that's how it works. So regardless of the reason that anybody throws a rock or does something stupid as a 14-year-old boy, there's a system that is there that protects these children who are minors, right? Like, can you imagine, like, if they took him to another country and then I didn't even know he had been arrested yeah. for anything that was so stupid as, like, stealing the Ronald McDonald from the front of McDonald's? That's what he did. <laughs> um, Good. I mean, it's really that ridiculous. And so we shouldn't look at this in a way that somehow excuses the Israelis because they don't, the military police doesn't need to be involved in this at all in the first place. Because here a vandalism or something like that would be handled by the law enforcement and you have a system that you go through that protects the rights of the child, looks at the family, and that enables you to have due process as, as an individual, as, as, as Americans, to get through that system in a way that's fair and just at the same time that holds you accountable for breaking the law. So I think that's the way to look at it. We need to really look at it like there, this is really a bizarre kind of context that because some, we're used to talking about Israel in certain ways, we tend to justify it or excuse it or normalize it and we have to say, no, let's look at what we do. Israel is a democracy, shouldn't it be the same? And realizing and understanding too, the Palestinians themselves actually have a law enforcement agency within the Palestinian territories that could handle crimes committed by anybody, so. Um, I'll go to Daryl in a second. Wait, this gentleman out here is No, he's, he's got to go after Daryl. Just keep in mind the proportionality here. Uh, Israel is the only country in the world that really has a judicial system for children and targets children like this. It happens elsewhere, but Israel, the so-called only democracy, the greatest friend of the U.S., has the system that punishes and abuses children, legally, according to them. Israel is really vulnerable here. But this goes below the radar. This is barely covered in the mainstream media. And this is where we really need to get organized and raise our voices. And just think, I mean, settlers with guns going after children, grabbing them, burning them alive. A military for throwing stones. Look at the proportionality of that. So I think we just really have to rise up on this issue much more than we are get organized. And, and go to No Way to Treat a Child. Just Google it. There are talking points, everything you need, plus the slides, most of the slides that Tom just shared with us.